Hey everyone, Diego Marquez here, your friend and sales. Today I have a couple more books to share with you guys in order to help your pursuit in become, to becoming the very best life insurance person that you can be. Or real estate, doesn't matter. It's all about improving sales. These ones are from the same author. It's High Touch Selling and Savage On, Sell it, uh, Savage on, on Selling from ja John Savage. And essentially, he was a really high top producer of uh, life insurance. And it focuses on a couple of things. To be honest, I think sometimes uh, the conversations, uh, you, you just need to get the, like kind of kind of to the bulk of things. And I think from him, there are two main key ideas that you can take away from his books. The first one is being consistent because he essentially he set out a certain schedule and he uh, focused on uh, delivering on that schedule, meaning if he uh, saw an agent that, that was not successful, the first thing that it was like uh, probing was, at what time do you start uh, do you start calling? See, if it's something like I start at eleven in the morning or something like that. See, so it's like every single day start at the same hour and at the same hour. You like keep uh, putting in the the effort and start uh, building your um, kind of journey on being more consistent. This is a key factor. The second one is about uh, delivering on essentially a referral business. And this is a, a key takeaway from pretty much all the top producing life insurance people out there. It's all about referrals. So until you get there, this is why I brought up the second book, because you hear this a lot about build a referral business, build a referral business, but what do you do until you get all those referrals, right? So essentially, if you, because in the first book, he essentially is saying that uh, it would be uh, nonsensical to pursue uh, an endeavor where you will always call calling up people and in, to a certain extent I agree because it's very exhausting but what happens is that in the second book he is talking about he understands that people do call calling and this comes to uh, this is what I wanted to to bring to you guys to your attention is that sometimes you get an advice from a so-called expert but then you don't know what the experts opinion is three months afterwards and if you get stuck with just one book, you would think that you wouldn't be doing any cold calling. And if you were struggling because you didn't have enough referrals, you would need to be cold calling, right? Because otherwise, like, do you start at nine o'clock in the morning? Fine. And then at 10, you don't have any more people to call. So what do you do throughout the rest of the day? See what I mean? This is the part that is not very well addressed in all these books that I've came across. So I brought this up regarding the second book because in the second one, he is addressing the fact that you might need to be doing some cold calling. Probably some, some people brought this to his attention in any made a point to writing it in the second book. So what I want you to realize is that you, you will have a certain percentage of people that are coming from referrals and you will have a certain percentage of people that are not coming from referrals. It's completely cold. And you need to be actually uh, specific in understanding exactly what it means to be cold calling because I hear a lot of people saying, oh, I'm cold calling. Call. You're not cold calling. You're calling leads that typed in the form. So it's not that cold because they're kind of expecting a contact in a way because you have like a pamphlet or have like a brochure or have like a lead form or something like that. They did something, right? The other ones didn't, right? They're not expecting you at all, right? These are the true cold calling people that you are doing. So there's a big difference. I'm not saying that uh, one is either easier than the other one. It's just it's just different. What I'm saying is that, well, probably it's easier because they're already expecting you, right? The other ones are not, right? I do that for a living. I actually act, have to, like, I call people. They are not expecting me at all, right? The other ones, when I was paying performance marketing com uh, co company, they were expecting me in a way because they typed in the lead form. I said, yeah, I, I did because I needed some mortgage protection or something like that. So you build up from there. These ones, you're presenting yourself, right, and started having a conversation because you're trying to get a meeting. And from that meeting, trying to uh, complete like a large, uh, kind of like a large premium based contract. So this is one I wanted to share with you guys. This was a, a top producing agent. I think he delivered, I think, between 25, or 25 to 50 million a year in premium. So this is a really a very accomplished individual. But the key here is that in the first point, he was talking about uh, being completely uh, referral based. But then in a second book, he addresses that you probably need to do some cold calling, right? So this comes to the point that you are probably at right now, which is what I am. 
It's a mix of both. And I would like in the near future to have the cold calling uh, out of the picture and just have like a referral business, but that's not happening. And I'm, I'm, I have a certain degree of confidence that probably I would have to deal with both uh, throughout my life insurance career and you probably have to deal with it too. So I just want you to, real, uh, to realize uh, this part. And the last one, actually I forgot to mention in, in the beginning, but this is really important. Because he was self-centered, and I'm not saying it's a good or bad thing, it's just a way of perceiving the world, either one is fine. What I mean by self-centered is that he's a specialist. And self-centered people, they're the specialists, the one that, or, or they, they're the ones that can do it, only them that can do it, right? If that's your case, you will need to have a large client. And this is something that he addresses in his book. He talked about the first chance that he, the, the first lucky break that he got was in 19 something something, and then he got a large client. And think about it. If you are dealing with cold calling people and you are calling business owners, you're probably gonna get like the kind of medium to low uh, premiums. It's life, uh, like they work alone and then probably don't have enough that uh, amount of money. Then probably you can nail kind of a medium fish kind of, so to speak. And then eventually, maybe, maybe you can get the really large one. Think about it, like 10 million in premiums or something like that, like in one in one go, something like that, right? These are the ones that you're looking for. Now, you can't put your life on hold just because you're expecting the big fish, right? So you have to keep building momentum. When I talked with a couple of billionaires, pretty much they told me the same thing. So I, I, I think it was like pretty much like very cool because they told me the same thing and probably they didn't, didn't, they didn't talk about me in the conversation, right? So it's like independent uh, approach to things. And both of them told me the same thing. And what they told me was they're looking at sales. And these were individuals that like have like billions in sales like for decades now. And they told me the same thing essentially. They're not looking for spikes. They're looking for consistency every single day. So everything that you're doing on a consistent basis must be on a consistent basis. And this entails what he's talking about in this book. What these billionaires told me essentially is that your activities must be like in a, like a, a consistent thing that you're doing. And eventually, if you do get one big fish, fine, that's fine, you get like a, a big jump. But for the sake of it, for the majority of cases, you probably get like much lower premiums, but it's important to keep uh, the ball rolling and having consistency. And the key to having consistency is you having your mindset right. This is really important. Not going about all crazy about all that uh, motivation stuff. It's just keeping yourself like sane, right? In, in regards to what you're doing. And don't get too caught up on negative people because you're gonna, you're gonna get them. It's just a matter of you letting them inside your head or not. You need to focus on either the positive ones or the negative ones. Which ones are you going to focus on, right? Because you're gonna get rich if the green people, like, <laughs> like we already mentioned in previous videos, pay you. So it's about finding more, th more those people. And if some of them are, are much greener than the, than the other ones, fine. But just focus on getting the minimum amount every single day so you can be consistent and you can start delivering results on a consistent basis. Because remember, when you start getting premiums paid on a consistent basis, your portfolio start increasing and you will start getting more money. I'll give you an example. I'm still, I'm getting paid from previous years work and it helps because this first, uh, f first couple of months were real, were a real rough to me because it didn't work that well but I still got money from the previous year. It's not an excuse, I'm not looking for that, I'm looking for delivering results, but it's, help, it's helpful because you're getting money from previous years. This is why I love life insurance uh, sector so much because at least here in Portugal, the model that we have, as long as keep, uh, people keep paying the premiums, you keep getting paid your commission. This is a really powerful thing because it will offset some months that probably not kind of uh, getting off track a bit. So until you get on track again, remember, it's all about consistency of what you're doing every, every single day at the same hour, doing the same type of um, grunt work in a way and delivering like your pitch to the best of your ability, keep improving on it. And eventually, if you do get like, uh, like a, a big fish, 
props to you because it's all regarding the it's a pretty much as like a it's like a, a, a very large um, premium for you for the amount of work that you have been delivering so as always stay strong and if you have any any further questions you need some help let me know i'll be more than happy to jump on board thanks